Okay, Council, if we need a mover and a seconder to open the meeting, please move by Councilor Peter Kustovic, second by Councilor Ted Tedman. Be resolved that we do call this regular meeting of Council to order on Wednesday, December 6, 2023 at 6.01 p.m. <coughs> Those in favor? And that is carried. And we'll hand it over to Deputy Mayor Peter Kustovic. The Council of the Corporation of Township of Warren Payne would like to begin by respectfully acknowledging the land on which we gather here today is the, is the Treaty 9, 1905-1906 territory, the tradi traditional lands of Indigenous peoples. We work towards reconciliation. May we all live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all its diverse peoples. Thank you, sir. I'll continue on to the approval of the agenda. I'm going to get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Gary Wilson-Panik, second by Councillor Ted Shenman. Be it resolved that Council does hereby approve the agenda as presented. Any comment? There being none, I put that to vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. <coughs> declaration of pecuniary interest, declaration of conflict of interest. Council, you can do that any time. <coughs> I don't have any paperwork as of right now. Item number six is adoption of the minutes from November 1st. We'll move on a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Belinda Kistemaker. Be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Harnkin does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, November 1st, 2023, as distributed. Any comment on those minutes? No comment. We put it to vote for adoption. Those in favor? And that is carried. And we have the November 15th regular meeting minutes. If I get a mover and seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shunman. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Pine is hereby adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, November 15th, 2023, as distributed. Any comment on those minutes? There being none, I put it to the vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. And there's no minutes or business rising from the minutes. We move on to 8.1. I can get a mover and a seconder to open up the reports. Moved by Councilor Gary Wilson, second by Councilor Ted Shunman. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of Township of Harm Team is hereby acknowledged the receipt of the departmental reports provided at the regular meeting of Council on Wednesday, December 6, 2023. And I'll hand it off to the CA report. Do you have any comments before we? I questions. I just wanted to add to my report that the um, that the township Christmas party has been postponed till January 12th, um, and that the uh, winner of the contest that we had, uh, we announced uh, the winner at the Christmas tree lighting, and it was Sophia Perlman. And that was it. I don't have any other um, information to add, but I can take any questions from council. Thank you, Eileen. And I'll close the floor now for Council for any questions for the CEO's report. Councillor Jarvis Spann, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And the CEO, how many people did enter into the contest and like the numbers? I, just uh, I don't have the exact number. I would have to ask uh, the admin assistant, but okay. I'm not sure exactly. Just for yeah. posterity, I'd like to know. And the uh, item on CWA, um, they're working for projects. With potential cost saving to municipalities, when will the report be forthcoming to council to review it? We'll see that we're working with a secure engineering firm. Sorry, which item is this? OCWA called? under CSPP2 coordination upgrade. Oh, uh, Aqua is currently working on it, so they're just currently in talks with Greenstone. Um, so it won't be this month, but most likely in January. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, any further questions? <clears throat> I did have one further question on uh, both the HAAs. And I wanted to know if it was in a past report or Currently, are we exceeding, like we are exceeding what's allowable, what we're trying to work on, but are we exceeding past the limits that the previous regulations were set at? I'm just trying to figure out like. I'm not sure. I know that they added this information 
um, most recently to one of the reports that gets put on um, onto the agenda. But I'd have to I'd have to reach out to Aqua to find out that information. Okay, thank you. And sorry, Mayor, can you repeat your question again, just so? Um, just what the the past regulation limits were would probably be all I need, and then I could just look at it there. <clears throat> and one other comment I had for the North Superior Regional Brand bro uh, Brand Broadband Network expense. I was wondering if there was another um, account that this could be taken out of. I'm concerned about having council donations to organizations being somewhere upwards of about 7100 after this budget. So I was wondering, is there another area? Uh, so I had, I know you brought this up in the agenda review and I had reached out to the treasurer and they did look into it and uh, they cannot, There, it doesn't seem like it was budgeted for in the past. So he's still looking into this and I'd have to get back to council about this information. Okay, and is council aware or want to have any discussion on that point of what I'm raising? I'm just concerned that in a few years it'll look like past precedents that we gave a bunch of money away in one year, which we didn't. This was for the internet uh, group we were part of. Right. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Sorry, I forgot to also add that um, it's coming out of the council donations to organizations. I believe this is in my report, but um, that one had the $500 budget, but because it wasn't budgeted for this year or elsewhere, it seems like in the past either, um, the treasurer had advice that this was the only place they could expense it from. So are you saying then it's a definite answer? We're not going to ask him or? He, I did relay your um, concerns and okay. he said that he can, he at, as of right now, he hasn't found anywhere else that it's okay. been pulled out of, but he still needs to look into it. But this is why he initially said that it was going to come out of this okay. area. And I did want to give a shout out to all the staff, to the fire department, uh, the public works department, um, and everyone that helped, Eileen and her crew, that uh, helped with the Christmas tree lighting. It was well attended and uh, it's just fantastic and hats off to everybody. I don't have any further questions on your report. Any further questions? We'll move on to the public works manager report. Dwayne, do you have any uh, additions to your report before I open up for questions? Just the night house is now on the ground. We're just finishing cleaning up the property. Okay. Looks good. Okay, any questions for Dwayne? Go Thank ahead. You, Dwayne, on your remaining derelict buildings, you have 42 fifth, 186 layered, 41 third for next spring. And I'm not sure of the exact when this plan is, but I was thinking the house right next to Mayor Cheryl's house, um, is that on, that isn't eligible yet or? Uh, not on my list yet. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, Councilor Yeah, thank you to you to uh, public course manager. Thanks for the snow removal uh, breakdown. Uh, the only concern I have is if it's less than 10, 10 centimeters, I'm talking about tank hill academia and edema when it's freezing rain, which occurred November 25th. Um, that's my concern. I mean, I'll leave that in your realm, but I think that should super seed any thickness of snow because the fact it becomes slippery because of freezing rain. I started about four o'clock that Monday morning. Two different total things, snow and ice are two different things. Right. Okay. Okay, I just want to be clear on that. Thank you. So just a follow-up question from these counselors to Bennett. So if it's different things so that are you out? So what would be the difference? Would you give me just an example? Well, ice is uh, I can't remember exactly the terms, but it's so much up to 24 to 48 hours after ice event, you have to put sand down. Okay. It's not like the accumulation of amount of rain or anything. 
Okay. So there's a way that we we find like we there's a way that we judge when it's icy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On your uh, was there any further questions? Go ahead, Councilor Peter. <clears throat> to you, Madam Mayor, Dwayne, just uh, it's been asked a couple times. Is there a, a process that you do when you do the snow removal? Because there's been times, and I know it's just logistics, that sometimes they cross paths, but there's been a couple instances where there was uh, several inches of snow, sander went by, and I know it's just how it works out sometimes, but is there, you, do you try to plan it so that the sander does go in after the plow? Yes. Okay. Sometimes we have to dump a little bit of sand down ahead of time because it is slippery. Right. And then you cross, but you come back after. We finish okay. up the sander falls behind. Thank you. And we have a route and they have their own separate routes. Okay, thanks. I wanted to say I really uh, appreciate the report, Dwayne. There's just some clarifications that I needed because I didn't know what the meaning of it was. The first one is on page two of your or three of your report where we're talking about snow removal. It's the five six classification. So, what does that mean? Five, five, six classification. We have road classifications based off of the uh, amount, of, amount of volume and the speed of the road. There's actually a matrix that I have to use. Okay. And uh, like 85% of our roads here in town are a six, but we have a few that are a five. It's just a classification based on amount of volume of traffic and the speed of the road. Okay, so volume of traffic and speed of Correct. the road. Okay. And so if it has, so if it's a six classification, then you have higher or a lower? Lower. Lower? lower. Okay. Number one, two is like the Bay Highway 17 and 11. Okay. And uh, our Bay Highway like four, three, four, and counts five, six. Okay. Thank you for that. All based on volume and speed. Okay. Um, also, I know I can't, I couldn't remember because we had significant discussions about this a few years ago was the significant weather event. And I couldn't remember, did we create a bylaw for that or? At the time, or are you going off the, it is uh, the minimum maintenance standards? The minimum maintenance, so it's the municipal or the act, right? Correct. That you're going from. Okay, and then who declares that? Is that yourself? It would more than likely be me to the CAO to make okay. sure we declare it. Okay. If I can't keep up, we declare it as the minimum maintenance standard. We'll stop snowing for five days straight. I can't keep it below 10 centimeters. We declare a minimum or a significant weather event, and we can actually close the road down even months. Uh, in a state of repair, because we're actually the service. Okay. But I don't have to try to keep up with the amount of snow. I can just clear the roads when the, the storm ends, basically. Okay. But we can keep trying. Right, right. Basically, it's snowing too much that you can't even That's keep it. up. Okay. I believe you had that a few years ago before I started. There was an event that you guys could not keep up to the amount of snow coming down. Right. Okay. And then you mentioned too that so a ninth building went down. And can you identify which one it is here? Or did you yeah, already say? 27 Riverside. The 127. Okay, okay. Oh, and you're still hoping to do 7 Spruce Street? Or? It's partially already down on its own, so we'll try to get that one cleaned up. The rest of the other three have basements, and we're getting into the freeze now, so it's hard to pull those basements out, so I'll do that next spring. Okay. Well, I gotta say, like, this is great news compared to where we were last spring when we oh, were absolutely. Worried, like this. So I just like give a shout out to your staff that they're doing this and it cleans up our town. And that we were able to use our own equipment. It's like, and the progress from when you first did your trial one to now, it's just amazing. Yeah, fourth operator is really helping out in this area. I can yeah. actually get more done. Okay. It's really helping me. So having the full complement and then the fourth. Okay, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Any further comments or questions? For the public works manager? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Oh, I don't know if I was done. Just a second. No, oh, I'm all finished. Okay, um, Stacy, do you want to speak to your report or I was on the floor? No. No, you're good? Okay. Questions from Council for the Economic Development Officer? Council, are you still Yeah, ahead. I'm married to Stacy. I see you're still waiting to the scope change request for community center. Yeah. Wow. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Any further questions? We'll 
I just noticed on uh, the report we have several uh, public engagements coming up. Do we know kind of when these are going to be taking place? I'm just I'm concerned about overwhelming the community, but at the same time, I want engagement. So, so we, um, I, I discussed uh, the public engagement with both consultants, and we decided to do it at the same time. They're going to work together. Oh, okay. I was talking about how we've done so much public engagement. This is both plans we're going to be dealing with business and investors. So we're going to do the public engagement as one, one set of interviews and um, focus groups, and that's going to be in January. So we did, we we had it planned for December, but because it's retail, we wanted to push it back to January. But we're going to be doing that together so we don't overwhelm you. Okay. Okay. Great. And will there be open, like an open uh, public, where we invite the public, like all public? Well, not for, not for the market gap is no, no, not that I mean the rebranding. Oh, the rebranding. So the rebranding, there's going to be a presentation of the the brand, uh, potentially the brand logo and tagline on the 29th of January. 29th of January. And that's for all public. Yes. Okay. And what are we thinking of posting that at the Legion, or no, do they know where they're hosting? Okay. And you said the 29th, basically. Yeah. That's, that's what we have so far, but we, we're still in brand development, so that's if everything goes as Yeah, so it could time. be there or further. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. And I just, for clarifications, when on your report you have the grants, and then it's under tourism, it's the red program. It says uh, working on deliverables. So those are the things that you've mentioned ahead, right? Where it mentions the red. Um, and are we expected to hit the target? Yes. So the, the main three projects for the OMAFRA grant for the red is the BRNE, the market cap, yeah. and, and the rebranding. Okay. So, so far we're on target for all of them. Um, I have to have the final report done for March 31st. Um, we're aiming for the first week for rebranding and the second week for the BRA and the market gap. So we're hoping to have all three projects done by the 15th. 15th of March? Okay. No. Have they come, uh, I'll come right to you, Bonda. Do they have they come up with any concepts yet of logo design and doing anything? So we haven't. We're they're in the brand development right now. Okay. We've done our um, community consultation and they have the creative brief with what they say the brand story, the idea that they they gain from the community. So the images come next. Oh great! Yeah. Okay. So it's going here. so far. It's going excellent. I'm excited to see what they come up with. They're just dynamic team. This. Cinnamon toast. Uh, Councillor Glenda Kissmaker, did you have a comment or a question? No, it was just a wow. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. I just didn't want to miss you. I did have a, I was um, near Northern Ontario Tourism Summit that you went to on yes. November 15th and 16th. What was the, out, what was your, the major outcome out of, out of that that you came back with? I think that um, one of the biggest things is that um, the tourism industry have, has shifted since 2020. Uh, there's, they definitely uh, shifted their focus and they're uh, aiming more at um, experiential travel and hitting the millennials. So the millennials are spending the most money of any other tourism group. So now marketing has kind of shifted to, to a younger, uh, younger audience globally. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Okay, any further questions from Council? Okay, thank you, Stacey. And if uh, we can put that uh, motion on the floor to a vote, those in favor to receive the reports. And that is carried. Okay, moving on to correspondence action items, we have uh, a letter about arena user fees. Did you want to speak to this first, Henry? I don't have a note about it. 
Uh, I just wanted to advise council that um, we received the letter from uh, the resident and um, <clears throat> as a result of the letter, um, there are changes that were made to the bylaw uh, due to the, I guess, the interpretation of the structure fees. So therefore, under bylaws on this agenda, there's a, 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 a schedule I, the recreation schedule has been amended um, and changes were made to the structure fees and note 16. Um, and I can explain the changes uh, further, but essentially um, it's changed so that it doesn't have to be like the, the change, the discount still applies to um, anyone buying five to eight passes and you get the 10%. Um, but now it can be, you know, you're buying for two adults and three kids. They all still have to be either for summer programming or public skate pass, and they all have to be the same kind. So let's say three kids, two adults, all for summer programming, um, and they're all monthly passes, and they have to be bought up the same, at the same time. So if you buy five to eight, you get the 10% discount. So that change is reflected in the new uh uh, or the amended schedule I. And that's all I have for that. Thank you, Emily. So I'd like to forward for discussion on this. So we had quite a bit of debate about this in the summer of changing this. And um, by this letter, I feel like it's not helping families. <laughs> like, that was a weird perspective. Uh. I know that we have to have so, so much money raised to pay for the arena or help subsidize, help pay for it. <clears throat> Minor hockey is probably the major contributor for rent for the arena side of the, the building. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm concerned that like, back in the day when you had minor hockey, you were already paying full rate for the minor hockey. You got a discounted rate for the public skating. We should probably look at that. And I know $66 doesn't sound like a lot, but when you got for kids, it, it adds up, especially in today's environment. I don't know what we can afford to. I don't know what it'd be worth it to uh, get a breakdown of what it would have cost us to lower it a little bit, but uh, that is substantial with everything else that we're being charged for. And again, I don't want to take away from the operating expense of the arena. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, there should be something that we, and we want to encourage, like I brought this up in the past about the weight room and uh, any facility, whether it's curling club or whatever, we want to encourage more attendance. We don't want to scare them away or or uh, deter them with extra expenses that they can't afford. Right, right. I think that's something that we should seriously look down, let's, let's seriously look at it. I know we did it in the summertime, but it obviously wasn't enough. And I had 10%, I don't believe it was helping the families, but at the end of the day, we got to ask what's it cost in the township. And like, if everything's already running, I know you have so much revenue, but it's not costing anymore to give a small price. It's just less revenue coming in, but the operational cost remains the same. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's different ways of looking at it. Well, I was trying to rack my brain about our five to eight passes. I remember we went away from the family pass just so they were more inclusive so that it, we didn't have to have a definition of a family, basically. But um, I'm concerned that the five discludes, like you don't capture it. And I was, I did not have time. I was thinking of uh, looking up what the actual average family is composed of in the sense of like, and I couldn't remember if either anyone can jog our memories of why we went with five days in the summer. And we decided on 10% after five to eight. Yeah. I don't know. That's, yeah. And we were, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm going to look at the schedule. I, are the summer passes significantly less than the winter passes? Do you want to speak? Yeah, I do actually. I wasn't at that meeting, so that's why I can't recall. I know I, oh, I, I we needed that. you there. No, I honestly <laughs> missed the meeting. I know for a fact that you, you decided 10%. I think we're all pricing ourselves. I'm looking across the communities that PHU belongs to, and they all lowered their prices for the facilities because people could not afford, due to COVID, due to many reasons. And we're, as a community, we're, we're promoting health, recreation, fitness. And we're penalizing large families. I, I think that's wrong. And I think it should be really looked at very thoroughly 
in the new year, whatever administration thinks a good time. It's irrelevant. Uh, every community is different. However, we have to tailor it for our own community, and I think this is way overpriced. Uh, I know if I was those shoes, I would be saying the same thing. So I would respectfully recommend to look at it in the new year and to look at line by line budget to see because we're promoting arena. That is correct. The author said that. That is right. And um, the cost is a little too steep, in my humble opinion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Pierce, uh, just I agree with uh, Councilor Stefanik. Uh, my only add to that would be uh, we have to look at it sooner than later. If we wait till next year and then we go over line by line, you know, with all respectfully, it's going to be the end of the winter. So I don't know what would be the fix there, but uh, I just worry that uh, people are going to be paying too much for. So this. Yes, go ahead. Come the ahead. seasonal pass is it from uh, November till next year of uh, April, or is it the end of this year? What's your time frame? Spring. Spring. So we get. Pass? Yeah. Go ahead. Winter okay. season. It says note twelve at the bottom. It's okay. November first to April thirtieth. Um, sorry, can I also add, I just want to advise Council that um, if, if Council did want to move forward with any changes to the actual percentage of discount or changing the fees, um, it would have, it cannot be implemented at this meeting. It would have yeah. to go back to the Treasurer, just like how in the beginning, when we were first re reviewing it in August, the Treasurer wrote a report to, to indicate to Council what where the deficit would be coming from, right? So. Yeah. The treasurer would then have to do the same thing, um, go back, write the report, indicate to council what what would happen if we made these changes. Um, so it wouldn't be implemented at this meeting and it would have to come back in the new year regardless. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking for consensus then that we're going to bring back the user fees. For what? The fifth time? Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it Yay. right the first time, next time. Yeah. Well, we thought we were. We were. Yeah. It's... Can, I okay. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. Councilor Glenda Kitzmaker. Back at the meeting, the, the last meeting when this came up, we talked about the definition of family, and it seemed like everyone had their own interpretation of how family works. But oh my gosh, when you're talking about a family in a household, you still have to look at a family. And I, and there's a reason why this is coming back up again, and it's because it's affecting the family. So should we be looking at this again as uh, a family issue this because that's what it is it is affecting and that's what we don't have listed in our in our uh, fees well we can definitely look at it okay so this is going to come back to council but um, the changes that are on the current bylaw are to ensure that people can take a, um, advantage of the 10% discount when applicable. My understanding was there, there wasn't much advantage from the 10%. Well, before, yeah, before it was you had to buy five, you know, like adult five kids. And it, yeah, so this gives a bit more flexibility. Okay. Okay, is there any other discussion on item 9.1? If not, it'll uh, carry over to the bylaw. Go ahead. Sorry, Mayor for and Council, I just wanted to clarify it. You want it brought back in the new year, but it, in what capacity? Because is there, if the treasurer needs to write a report, like what information, do you know what I mean? Like what are we re revisiting or is it just coming back for discussion at that time? Mm -hmm. I think the three things are the percentage that we are we able to give a higher percentage if we can change the amount of the passes from maybe three to four to eight and then the possibility of what the family pass would look like also so just 
Yeah, go ahead, Belinda. Also, can we throw in there the uh, minor hockey issue when uh, minor hockey, when you have kids in minor hockey, can we look at a discount for public skating? For minor hockey. Because that's the other thing that's coming up. They pay too much. Okay, so yeah, go ahead. can I clarify to council? So you you want to? I will go back to the treasurer and ask: Can we give? Can the township give a higher discount instead of the ten percent? If we can do four to eight, a discount for four to eight passes instead, can we look at possibly giving going back to a family pass, and then yeah. and then give a discount for public skating for those who also attend minor hockey? Is that is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yep. And I think it would be the leather capture is part of what's happening, right? And that's not the only that wouldn't be the only family it's happening to. So those items that we're looking at, that would be what we're trying to resolve. Was in that letter, the crest in that letter. Councilor Kitchen. Go ahead. Through you, Madam Mayor, it's all council and staff. Does anyone recall what our arena recovery percent is? Um, <clears throat> I was thinking it was in the 24 to 25%. Does that sound familiar? Does it? I know 25% of the healthy, that's if you have a 25% revenue coming from So maybe we were at 18. I know, yeah, I think we're in the teens. Okay. I'd like to make a comment just for the clarity of the situation, Councilor Shetland, is when the expenses are shown towards the arena and the budget and whatnot, how we expense things out, they go by the square footage. So obviously our arena and curling club is by far the largest square footage footprint that we have in our community. And then when you divide that up and you figure it out, so like say insurance costs. So say I'm just going to put it out there. We close the arena curling club down. There's a percentage of insurance. We're not going to save on insurance. We might save a little bit on liability, but all the other stuff we're going to be paying for. Snow removal will still stay the same. The actual true numbers are we, I know those numbers are applied to it, but it's not the actual truth of the matter is. It's when you got to look at dollar for dollar, I believe it's probably higher than, that. you know, unless because like, I mean, if would we lay off or leave hand up at that arena? I don't believe we would if we had, if it wasn't there. There's a few other things that you got to look at. Those expenses remain the same whether they're there or not. It's just depending on how you put the, how you justify it or or uh, however you want to say you put it down and you organize it. But at the end of the day, it's not true representation of what it actually costs to operate our recreational facilities. And you figure it higher than that. Higher than that our report? percentage that's contributed is higher. Oh, our percentage. Yes, okay. yes, I believe For the it is. Because we're showing high six figures that run like as a deficit, which I never could understand. It was I think of it as a service rather than a deficit. Mm -hmm. It's like snow removal and everything else in the community. But uh, but just the way they have it all out and mm -hmm. what it actually costs to operate the arena because when we shut the heat off in the curling club, mm -hmm. you want to keep that because it would go, you know, there's a lot of things to look at like You'd have the liability and all that, but the insurance is not, they're mainly picked up by the organizations that are using these facilities at the time. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a wash. So I, I've just seen these numbers on paper and I, I, would have, I would take issue with it because it's not the actual cost, the true representation of the true operational cost. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Chairman, go thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my thought was more if we were looking at something and we look at an hourly rate of what we rent the arena for, so if our recap rate is 18%, then if we look at something where we can recap percentage of that hourly rental would make something that if we can look at that and we can drive the numbers to be able to see that you know forecasting that what the realistic usage rate is because right now we're getting very very few users and I, and I talked to Jay and so there's not a lot of usage on the public skating and but what there should be yes yeah Okay, so any further discussion on that? <clears throat> and I mean, you have everything you need. I think so. I do want to say to council that uh, the treasurer has quite a bit that they're trying to catch up on for year end and also trying to get ahead on the budget. So I don't anticipate this coming back until at least 
possibly the second meeting in January, if not later, right? Because there's certain things that he has to prioritize as well. Okay, thank you. Tell me if I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shannon. To be resolved with the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Quarantine, does your prior proceed as discussed? Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, item 9.2, follow-up discussion to Council Honorarium. Did you want to speak to this item first? Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I wanted to mention is that uh, I did notice that uh, for the symposium, uh, HHC has asked for uh, the EDO or municipal. Sorry. Oh, sorry. No, I don't have anything for that one. Okay. So I open up the floor for discussion for the council. Okay, seeing no discussion, I have a few comments. Or I I no, touch in. no, go ahead. I um, when I read that uh, last night and this afternoon again, um, I think that it was very well written and I am totally in agreement with Mr. Wildman that uh, they have done their due diligence and mm -hmm. certainly done enough research to make sure that they were in line and I believe it's okay the way it is. Thank you, Pastor Sean. Yeah, I just wanted somebody else make comments if I put me first all the time. I uh, read, studied, and analyzed all the information I had. And all the information for the staff, administration, I looked at all the data, I read the report three times over again. I feel satisfied with the recommendation. Furthermore, when new members of council get elected in three years, if it's their pleasure to change or alter it as they feel as it's more fairer, but at this time, I will go along with the report that was recommended at a small. Thank you. Any further comments from council? Well, my opinion on this has not changed at all. We did our hired a consultant to get it done, it needed to get done, it hadn't been done in years, and uh, the report speaks for itself. I don't think there's any further discussion on this matter, and I think it would be a waste of uh, staff time to be recording kilometers. Any further discussion? Councilor well, I don't think we have to take consideration because we're concentrating on the kilometers, but I, I <clears throat> with everything going up so expensive, like I'll be honest, everybody knows we don't, the councillors, you are in a different boat, but uh, uh, the councillors don't put a ton of kilometers on for, you know, it's minimal. But I'm looking at cell phone usage and and uh, and the internet usage. And you can say, well, you, you can use the argument, we've already had it, and we've all got unlimited plans and yada, yada, yada. But it's still, you're being compensated for something that you're paying for at personal rate. And and uh, we are, if you, if the comparative figures, we are still near the bottom end, if not almost at the bottom. And uh, it was recommendation that we use the third party, and it was by the CEO at the time, and everybody seemed to be happy with it. So I'm fine with whatever anybody was with there on that. I'm just uh, I, I, I find it a little more fair that you know. And then uh, the truth is, is if the next group that are coming in, I would imagine it's staying the same. They might want to, like Councillor Stefanik says, lower it again. Mm -hmm. But we are going on third party, like we've done pretty well every move we've made from uh, how we're governed and the rules that we followed and the uh, guidelines that we followed, both financially and ethically. Thank you for that, Dr. Yeah, I think the other part that I want to uh, note too is that you have to remember you want to be inclusive. You want to make sure that everyone can sit at this council table. So um, all 
five of us may easily afford internet and a phone. But uh, that doesn't mean everyone that puts their name on the ballot can do that either. So those are comments that I thought of later after this I had read this. And if there's no further discussion on this item, we'll have it tabled and uh, acknowledge receipt of it. Okay, and move on a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Ted Shenman, second by Councillor Peter Kitzmaker. Be resolved that Council does hereby acknowledge receipt of the CAO SR 2023 15 Council Renumeration Update as prepared by Island Singh CAO Clerk. Those in favor? And that's carried. And then opposed. We have 9.3. We can have the floor now. <laughs> Okay, so the only thing I wanted to mention just to Council um, for the symposium was that I noticed that uh, there's staff involvement being requested, uh, probably most likely the EDO. Um, so I just wanted to mention that the EDO is currently working on strategic goals as there are three projects, as she had mentioned earlier, um, that are due by March 15, 2024, along with her FedNOR deliverables. Um, so I would ask HHC if they could advise as to the specifics of um, staff involvement, how many hours needed, exactly what's needed. Um, and then another thing that I wanted to mention was that the CIP might not be implemented by uh, February next year as the 2024 budget needs to be done prior to. Okay, I think I can address some of those. Or Belinda, did you want to address some of those comments? I'll let you go ahead and I'll try and fill in the blanks. Okay, thank you. So basically what's happening is our community, if there's people who want to build houses, they want to um, they want to buy property, there's uh, quite a bit of support now for the seeds home. And we had a discussion at the HHC board table is that uh, one of the barriers to this is people, especially the young people that are moving in, they're making you know good money out at the mill or they're making good money at the end or wherever their employment is. Most of our jobs are higher paying. And, um, but they don't know how to get started. They don't know how to get a mortgage. They're not sure, um, and we have very few facilities. They're not sure how to, like if they build a home, like how do I do that? So um, the board thought a housing symposium would be good. Seed Homes was on board. The realtor in town, uh, Kimmy Dwethi was already had, uh, was like excited about this. And um, from the perspective of town uh, support, it would be, for the promotion of it just so that we're on the same page and we're doing it together the majority of it would be done by HHC the only part that we don't we can't um, facilitate is how do you purchase property from the municipality and that's what we would need from and then if the if the CIP isn't in order yet it would just be maybe a quick walk through what the CIP is I guess but if it's not something that they can utilize at that time but the basics, the basis of this is really to attract, um, like I was talking to a young man just last night, they're looking for property outside of Hearst. Like we don't want them looking at Hearst. If they can build here, they need to build here. So um, so why we, why we brought it right away to council was um, the administrator at the HHC would like to try and get the other um, people on board. And it may end up being, we may end up going with a virtual session, so it's all virtual and we can record the sessions. We haven't even got that far yet. We just wanted to ensure that the township knew what we were doing and had uh, support and principle. And then those two items. And <clears throat> yeah, any questions on that? Yeah, I'd just like to compliment the EGC. I think it's a solid idea. I think it's um, something new, and I think it'd be positive benefit uh, for all the citizens in our community and newcomers as well. Mm -hmm. Good things. Any further questions? Oh, Councilor Belinda Kitzmaker. Sorry, go ahead. The Housing Corp, um, I think we have to start showing what we're there for 
and I think this is a good start. It's an introduction of um, what we're there for and uh, what we have, what we want to help out with and all that kind of thing. So I, I really think it's a good thing. It's a, it's a start for how the community can come and ask questions or um, give us some input on what they're looking for, that kind of thing. So it's a start on on what we're there for, basically. And I don't think we should wait another year. <laughs> no, I don't think we should wait another year either. My take is that, um, and we heard the <clears throat> presentation from Seed Homes, they are eager to invest in the community and I want it to be home paying. So it's, uh, <laughs> I think it would be a good idea. But uh, if we aren't uh, sure of uh, staff allowances right now, we could amend the agenda or the agenda, the um, motion to make it more flexible. Or do you find this flexible enough? I mean? Uh, I mean, I'd have to discuss it with the, the EDO to finalize just where she's at, to be honest, right? There's so many deliverables that she has around that same time. Um, I'm not sure. I don't, the deputy clerk is uh, away for this meeting. She wasn't feeling well, so I'm not sure. Um, well, I'm just rereading it now there, I mean, I think it's pretty flexible. This is in principle, right? It's not uh, dedicating support right now. Yeah, I think that's fine. Council, are you in agreement with that? I can read the motion. Can we have further discussion? Moved by Councillor Ted Shenman, second by Councillor Curtis Scott. Where's the township has received correspondence from Horn, from Horn mm -hmm. Housing Corporation, HHC, requesting council support and staff participation for a housing proposal to be held in February 2024. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does here provide in principle for, for the Hornpain Housing Corporation's housing proposal. Any further discussion on that motion? Okay, we're doing that. Let's put that to a vote. Those in favor? Yes, carry. Okay, moving on to 9.4. And you had an update for this uh, item before I... Yes, sorry, I have a few items or a few things to say about this. Um, so uh, the the Curling Club realized there was an error and uh, there's an additional page there um, that Council all has. Um, the breakdown that was in their original letter is um, a little bit incorrect. So uh, highlighted on, your, um, on that page there that's by your agenda is um, add no, or November 28th to January 6th should actually be uh, November 28th to January 5th. So it equals 39 days and it would be $6,045 versus $6,200. Um, and then the total cost to the club would be uh, $20,460 versus $20,650. And then the other thing I wanted to mention as the um, Curling Club also had a few um, concerns. Uh, the motion that's currently on the agenda I believe it is the uh, second paragraph where it says, whereas the installation and maintenance of the curling ice surface was previously undertaken by volunteers from the curling club who have since requested that the township install and maintain the curling ice surface. Um, our treasurer had uh, reviewed the motion, but misunderstood um, as he thought the previous work prior to 2023 was actually being done by volunteers. Um, and we had, we, would, we will be amending the motion, uh, but I just realized that the deputy clerk has the amended motion. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to mention that the curling club isn't asking for, um, isn't asking for, uh, asking for staff this year, but this has been in practice since 2000, sorry, 2020 at least. Mm -hmm. um, so that part of the motion will be amended. Um, and I, as per the treasurer, there isn't a budget for the wages for the curling club um, startup slash maintenance for 2023. However, however, these costs are included in the budget for the arena instead. Um, so where 
the treasurer in his comments indicated staff costs may simply be redirected from other departments, but if additional costs are incurred, such as overtime or additional manpower, those are not budgeted for in 2023. Therefore, you may, in 2024, the township may need to reallocate wages and benefit costs from the arena to the curling club so that there's a budget there to properly show the allocation of those costs. Um, the treasurer's suggestion to council moving forward is that the township should allocate these costs separately for the curling club in the budget, just so that the allocations are seen more clearly. And, um, and um, furthermore, the curling club just wanted to understand where, um, where these agree like where the understanding and practice from prior years was coming from um there have been previous agreements from 2016 and on that were passed as bylaws and therefore it that indicates this understanding has been in place at least since 2016 and onwards and when you say that understanding has been in place since 2016 that's that they have been charged the day rate since the time the plant got turned on turned on that rental uh, part in the draft agreement which is on here as well yeah, that rental section that has been in there since about 2016. So that's been standing practice. We didn't change anything in that in the sense every year to year agreement then. The only time it was changed was last year because the Freon leaked. And so the agreement started in January versus it's always been, for instance, it would have been 22, 2022 slash 2023 last year, but because the Freon leaked and there was no, it had, I think it was down for a few weeks. Um, it started in January, and then the agreement was then exactly the same for this year. Uh, it would it started it's, it would start 2023 and go into 2024. So yeah, nothing's been changed. Um, there's been a few sections that have been added in the draft curling club agreement, but that has been discussed with the curling club, and uh, they were in agreement. Any questions or discussion at this point? Yeah, in respect to the letter, I thank the executive for sending the letter in. I concur with them 100%, everything that's stated in that letter. Number one, they were shortest changed for 13 years, and we all know that's most accurate. And every year we promised and promised, didn't come through it. I agree 100%. The fact they don't have the facility to rent out, to use as a bar, a social, rent out to different because I was there before 8045, they were making 30, 40, $50,000 a year because they were renting out facilities for weddings. And I agree 100% uh, from January 6th to April 7th, uh, the rental cost, however, that could be looked upon once they receive their club room, we could be revisit the issue. I think that's fair. And that's why they paid previous years from the time the plant was turned out because they had the funds. Now they have no funds. I mean, it's insanity at its best. So I was certainly 100% on my behalf, January 6th to April 7th, they should be charged and not the November 28th. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Council. Council Pace, I agree with that. Yeah. Council Stefani basically said my thoughts, uh, paying for something that you're not getting. And, uh, you know, it was, we had amazing volunteers, Mr. Lutowski, who had been before that, and Charlie Paul, and the list was on. But uh, we were one of the only ones up in this part of the country that would actually have volunteers. We had, they had other towns have paid employees doing it. So yeah, I, I believe we have the staff is as stressed as they are and, and they are work hard, keep things the way they are and they shouldn't be paying for, like the letter says, I agree, it should be in line with every other uh, organization using their recreation facilities. Okay, thank you, Councilor. Councilor Belinda Kissinger, go ahead. I totally agree with uh, Peter and uh, Councilor Peter and uh, Councilor uh, Drago on this issue. I was actually done we were doing that. <laughs> okay, thank you. <clears throat> well, I have a few comments about this letter. I totally disagree with the second paragraph of the second page of the letter. We feel that the curling club has always been treated unfairly by council in several aspects and would like to reconsider charging us rent for the time the plant turns on and change to January 6th. I've sat at this table now seven years, six years, and we have made concessions and we've heard delegations and I was, uh, I was actually quite 
um, I'm taken back by the tone of the letter. I feel like it's not uh, building a relationship. And I was very concerned about where the relationship got messed up. Um, I was also concerned about the delay of it coming to council. It took about six weeks for an agreement to get sought and done. And I do want to highlight that we had other issues happening at the township that would cause that delay. And I feel the stress of that on the curling club as well. I am concerned about making a one-time change just because and changing the agreement to something that we haven't done in the past for, and we believe it's back to 2016 was the first agreement that we had made. And I asked Eileen for the agreement from 2019. I read it and I read the agreement from 2020 and it was $155 since then. And it wasn't changed. I believe it wasn't increased in the last user fee update. So I am quite concerned and I don't want to see curling closed. I think I really like the treasurer's recommendations that we invite the club executive to a deputation or a presentation so that we can work on our relationship. I think that uh, when we have budget deliberations in the spring that members of the curling club should be present we have open consultation there's opportunity and and i am going to say this straight out to the community that i am sick and tired of revisiting stuff that we have already looked at it takes a lot of staff time and we don't have time for this when we're trying to build our community it's frustrating and and it's frustrating for the club itself And to the other points in the letter of comparison with uh, horn pain minor hockey and other users of the other parts of the facility, I don't want to just make broad strokes and compare it that way. I would want to look at real comparisons of what it's not just the ice surface was never just created for horn pain minor hockey. It's been a sad thing that we lost figure skating over the years. We do have public skating. And I grew up in a community that I didn't even know the skate till I was 30. So <clears throat> I'm a strong supporter of the arena and the curling club. So basically, if we're going to make a decision tonight to, I am more in favor of signing a contract and looking at a one year donation and then discussing it further. I'm not in favor of signing a contract going. 40 days less in our contract than we haven't in seven years or six years. <clears throat> so I put that all out there and I think we should have further discussion. Councillor Peter Kitsch, so just to get ahead. this straight, Madam Mayor, so like last year was an exception because of the uh, the breakdown, the mechanical breakdown, the mechanical failure in the uh, compressor. But so, but and this... I want to and to, to that point, Peter. Yeah. Last year was extremely successful because of the staff of the township. Right. Because of the public work staff, that yeah. curling club was only running last year because of the foresight. So, yeah. So anyway, continue on. Okay. So, but just so I'm I, I'm, I'm on the same page. But the years prior, uh, back to you said 2016, I believe that yes. they, they, this is how, what would, the agreement now is what was charged, that was that, that was present set since 2016 to 2022. Yes. Well, I, when I read like the contract, yep. I thought we had shifted and, you know, rightly so, we've had lots of changes mm -hmm. in this year. So I thought maybe we had done something different or maybe our user fees, we, you know, it was an oversight. Yeah. But when you look at contract to contract, that that was the way it was written yes okay okay mm, thank you councillor Douglas. yeah if memory serves me is correct when i was a director of parks and rec um 
the first of all, paid the season of September to end of April. Then as the executive got smaller, less workers, volunteers, uh, less participation, and there was three years, there was no curling at all. Then they came back, the council was still here, and the council, just as they, as they if you go back to uh, 209, 210, 211, I don't have a funny if I remember it. And the council at that time of the day did allow that specific one time reduced operating cost for that specific year. And that's where it ended. Mm -hmm. So I just want to everybody know that's what happened. I was here. Yeah, so I would be in favor of that. I would be in favor of that we sign the contract with the intention um, to give the CAO. Uh, direction that we'll have a further discussion a significant donation would be made so that curling can exist this year and then we actually go into active talks with the curling club and hopefully we get notice on our change of scope because nothing's going to move until we find out that change of scope and you know I've said it before who do we need to call we just got to start calling people like why we're waiting a year for a change of scope is beyond me um, I would like to invite them to uh, a delegation I think you know and I wanted to list out and I did not have the time to go back in all of our meetings but I know that we made concessions on taking care of the ice that we do that now that um, we also uh, help remove all the gym equipment and give uh, further days I actually noticed that in the contract and I was like we need to give further we need to extend that out in the contract so that staff is um, adequately prepared for when they have notice because right now it's I think in the contract it says two weeks before the date of the venue or event well you know if public works has I, I'm not sure what it could be um, detrimental I mean sorry that that section is new in the draft agreement and that was agreed upon with the curling club when we were making when I put that in um, and that's more so notice to the fitness facility that an event is happening, but the public works department, it's pretty much the same every year. So they're, they are aware and they are able to uh, usually prepare in advance for that. I just wanted to add that. Thank you. Evan. The only thing is we always have to remember though, that when we're creating documents at this table, it might not be the same stuff the next year. So the document has to be clear on what's happening and how it happens. So, <clears throat> something yes go ahead Wanda, counselor Kitzmaker. Uh, because of what you just said and what i'm noticing is a pattern we it sounds like uh when it comes spring um it seems like um anyone who's using our arena our staff should be meeting with and um they should be there should be uh a plan where they, they should be, have their plans ready to present to us on what they think and how they feel and all that. And then we can go forward and not at the last minute all the time. It should be something that's done in the springtime or just before the season starts. And then everyone knows and expects and knows how the program's going to work. Yeah, and I think, you know, Glenda, this is just not curling this is like hockey the whole works like you know yes i agree and i think it can be an easy fix that when we open up public consultation for uh, budget everyone that's affected by our budget line item from the christmas party to the curling club gets an email that you know, it's just an email list hey budgets are coming budget delegations uh, or um public consultation and we need to hear from you but um and I think that would help resolve it. Is that what you're thinking, Belinda? Yes, because it is showing that uh, things keep coming up and that, and that has to stop. Everyone has to be on the same page. I agree. Okay, I'm gonna uh, move her in a seconder and then we can discuss the motion further. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shannon. 
Whereas the township has received correspondence from the CND Paul Curling Club executive regarding concerns with the pending rental agreement for the curling club space, and whereas the installation and maintenance of the curling ice surface was previously undertaken by volunteers from the curling club. Um, and this is changing actually, sorry. I, I do have the amended version oh, right great. here. Thank you. you. Read it. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry, I'll continue with that second paragraph. Whereas the installation of the maintenance of the curling ice surface where it was undertaken by volunteers from the curling club until 2019, who then requested the township install and maintain the curling ice surface. And whereas the ice surface takes approximately three weeks to install and once installed requires daily maintenance by the public works department, such as monitoring the curling plant, monitoring the temperature of the ice and shading and pebbling the ice surface. And whereas the curling plant was turned on for the 2024 curling season and ice installation began on November 28, 2023, whereas the CND Paul Curling Club executive has advised that their seat curling season begins on July 6, July, January 6, 2024, and whereas council supports community groups who help with enriching residents' lives by providing recreational services, and whereas council has considered the costs associated with this request against potential revenue generated between November 28, 2023 and January 6, 2024. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Farmingdale does hereby agree to change the starting rental date for the CND Paul Curling Club Executive for the club curling club space from November 28, 2022-2023 to January 6, 2024. Be it further resolved that the cost to cover the plant operations for the balance of 2023 will be expensed from. <clears throat> Go ahead, I just wanted to uh, mention to council that at the bottom of the treasurer's uh, comments, he does kind of indicate some recommendations to, to council. Well, my recommendation is that we amend the therefore be it resolved at the bottom. So we sign the contract as we've signed the past contracts. I would like to uh, propose that the amount for the 40 days, so it's actually 61.50, right? It's 39 uh, days and it's uh, the amount is 60.45. 60.45. I would make the suggestion that the 6045, we take it out of a reserve and we make it as a donation in honor of Michael Toski as a one-time donation. And then we invite the curling club to the table so that we can figure this out for next year. And it's all a win-win. I have no problem standing behind that. But we have, and we need to bring them to the table. We have to talk about that plant. We have to talk about getting support to get that change. So um, I think at this stage of the game, we're going to need further information from our treasurer. But can we put a motion on the floor to defer? And then we bring it back, but we, that's the direction we're going with consensus. Does that work? Yeah. Just because we don't have the numbers exactly, but that would be my, is the council in favor of that? I heard three of you say that you wanted to go with the complete 40 days. Yep, I'm in favor. Councillor Rob, going to kiss my go ahead. I'm in favor. Okay, Councillor Ted Chenman. I'll also be in favor. Okay. Okay, if I can get a mover and a seconder for a motion to defer. Moved by Councillor Peter Kissinger, second by Councillor Dredus Fennick. And I don't have that motion in front of me. The Township of Horn Payne moves to defer item 9.4 for further information until January, the first meeting of January. Um, yeah. Uh, sure, I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but. Well, it's a motion to defer. I just want to make sure that I have everything in there. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay, and do you have any further, do you need any further guidance on that? Uh, no, I'm going to go back to the treasurer and just ask him where this, the 6045, which reserve I'm assuming will come out of and then bring that, that back to council for the January 10th uh, meeting. Okay, I do believe we have some recreation reserve, right? Um, and then when do we have, do we have any room for presentations? Because I would prefer to have a presentation and time to meet with Carolyn Club before we totally set the budget. So sorry, what was your question again? Do we have presentation time in January on any of our meetings? Like I would like to invite them to an actual meeting. Um, it, it can't be for the 10th. I'm not sure for the 24th we'll have our reports. And I think the 24th is actually quite full as well, it's just because we have several items coming back from this year into that meeting. Okay. So the first, uh, the first meeting in February then, and then we'll look at passing our budget by the end of February if we can, or the beginning of March. It was getting pushed anyway mm -hmm. due to the delay. So. Any further comments on that before we continue? And before I put the defer to a vote? There being none, those in favor to defer, and that's carried. Okay, item uh, 9.5 is uh, a support resolution thing. I'm going to move on a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Drago Sopana, second by Councillor Blum Kissmaker. Where is the jury that heard the Carol Button and Teresa Kluzek and Natalie Ornaminden inquest? The Renfrew, <clears throat> the Renfrew County inquest issued 86 recommendations to prevent further death. And delivered those recommendations to the province of Ontario on instrument partner violence. And whereas the recommendation one of the inquest is for the province of Ontario to formally declare instrument partner violence, IPV and academic epidemic, and whereas on any given night in Canada over 6,000 women and children sleep in shelters because, because it is not safe for them at home. And whereas over one in three women in Canada aged 15 years and older with, will experience IPV in their lifetime. And whereas each year over 40,000 arrests result from IPV accounting for about 12% of all violent crime in Canada. And whereas this past year in Ontario, 52 or one every week were victims of femicide. And whereas according to Statistics Canada, 80% of intimate partner violence was unreported. And whereas violence against women costs the national justice system, healthcare systems, social services agencies and municipalities nearly $10 billion per year. And municipalities are on the front line for addressing gender-based violence. And whereas over 70 municipalities across Ontario have declared gender-based violence and or intimate partner violence ep epidemic. And whereas council recognizes the issues of violence in rural and northern communities as serious to health and wellness of local families. And whereas at the regular meeting held on August 9, 2022, council passed resolution number 2022-239 in support of private members bill C-233 to raise the level of education on IPV and coercive control of federally appointed judges. And whereas the Parliament designated December 6 as the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women to remember those who have lost intimate part, experienced intimate partner violence and those who have lost to it, as well as to reaffirm our commitment to fight the hatred and misogyny that still exists today. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporations Township of Parkland does hereby, on the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women, declare intimate partner violence as an epidemic, as per recommendation number one of the Renfrew County Inquest. Be it further resolved that this res resolution be forwarded to the Honorable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honorable Afrin Vereni, Minister of Justice, the Honorable Carmine A. Williams, Associate Minister of Women, Social and Economic Opportunity, the Honorable Farm Gill, Minister of Red Tape Reduction, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, FCM, Carol Hughes, MP, Algoma Manitoulin, Caps Gason, Michael Mantha, MPP, Algoma Manitoulin, and the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, Phnom, and the Chadwick Home. <clears throat> Any discussion on that motion? I am in complete support of it as my discussion and I think after the tragedies that happened in uh, Sault Ste. Marie, which is so close to home, we better start acting our country can go to 
spot. Those in favor? No, it's carried. No, it's holes. 9.6 support tax credit for firefighters. Mover and seconder, please. Move by Councillor Peter Kissemaker. Second by Councillor Belinda Kissemaker. Forest Canada has 90,000 volunteer firefighters who provide fire and all hazard, hazard emergency services to their communities. In addition, approximately 8,000 essential search and rescue volunteers respond to thousands of incidents every year. And whereas many of these individuals receive some form of pay on call and honorarium or are given some funding to cover expenses, but they do not draw a living wage from firefighting. And whereas without volunteer firefighters and search and rescue volunteers, thousands of communities in Canada would have no fire and emergency response coverage. And whereas in 2013, the federal government initiated a tax credit recognizing these individuals and calling on the federal government to increase this tax credit from, from 3,000 to 10,000, whereas volunteer firefighters account for 71% of Canada's total firefighting essential first responders. The tax code of, the Canada, of Canada currently allows volunteer firefighters and search and rescue volunteers to claim a 3,000 tax credit if 200 hours of volunteer services were completed in a calendar year. This works out to a mere $450 per year which we allow these essential volunteers to keep of their own income from their regular jobs, $2.25 an hour. If they volunteer more than 200 hours, which many do, this tax credit becomes even less. These essential volunteers not only put their lives on the line and give their time, training and efforts to Canadians, but they also allow cities and municipalities to keep property tax lower than if paid, paid services were required. It would also help retain these volunteers in the time when volunteerism is decreasing. Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporations Township of Hornpain call upon the Government of Canada to support Bill C-310 and enact amendments to subsections 118.062 and 118.072 of the Income Tax Act in order to increase the amount of tax credits for volunteer firefighting and search and rescue volunteer services from 3000 to 10000 Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Association of Fire Chiefs of Ontario, the Algoma Mutual Aid Association, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. Any further comment on that motion? There being none, I put it to a vote. Those in favour? And that is carried. Item 9.7 is the Long-Term Care Amendment Act. If I'm going to move her a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shannon. Whereas the care, support, and happiness of older adults in harm pain is a priority for Council, and whereas within the province of Ontario, couples do not have the right to accommodate together when entering long term care facilities, and whereas the separation of spouses upon entering long term care facilities is a common occurrence across Ontario, and whereas older adults deserving dignity and care and should have the right to live with their partner as they age, and whereas Bill 21 amends the Residence Bill of Rights set out in Section 3 of the Fixing Long-Term Care Act 2021 by adding the right of residents to not be separated from their spouse upon admission and to have accommodations made available for both spouses so that they may continue to live together. And whereas the Conservative provincial government may bring forward a new bill that is in principle supports the intent of Bill 21 to fix the Long-Term Care Amendment Act, Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation, the Township of Hornpain, does hereby support any future bill to fix the Long-Term Care Amendment Act and request that the provincial legislature enact any current or future proposed bills to fix the Long-Term Care Amendment Act. Be it further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Stan Cho, Minister of Long-Term Care, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario, AMO, and the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities. Any... Uh, Discussion on that motion? I just had one question. Um, why we hadn't included um, NOMA? Uh, it was most likely probably because we were following a template, so they might have just not had NOMA on there, but NOMA can be added. Okay, just because it is uh, like the Federation of Northern Ontario Municipalities, just for the public's sake, is actually the eastern part of Northern Ontario, and NOMA is the northwest, and I think we should include it. Okay. So can I uh, add, <clears throat> um, we'll take out the and, mm -hmm. and comma, and Northwestern Ontario Municipal Association, NOMA. And with that, I put that to vote. Those in favour? And that is carried on, please. <clears throat> okay, we're going to have one uh, more 
9.8. And then after this uh, motion, we're going to take a short uh, break. Moved by Councillor Peter, or sorry, Commander Shenaman. Second by Councillor Peter Kissmaker. Whereas, the, whereas Ontario has 196 field conservation officers, including six canine handlers who provide protection to municipalities' natural resources and uphold public safety by enforcing hunting and firearm laws and investing gruesome injuries and even deaths that result from hunting-related accidents. In addition, the conservation officers are often first responders and ensure public safety by facilitating evacuations and enforcing emergency area orders during the forest fires during record-breaking wildfires such as we witnessed this past summer. And whereas conservation officers perform comparable work to police officers and other enforcement officers within the province and are professional armed peace officers trained to police standards and undergo the same training. Whereas Ontario municipalities must ensure residents are informed and their interests are safeguarded and ensure that they have access to outreach and natural resources, compliances, resources, compliance services, Therefore, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby support the Ontario Conservation Officer Association in their efforts to have conservation officers in the province of Ontario reclassified as enforcement officers and be compensated fairly. Be it further resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the Honourable Doug Ford, Premier of Ontario, the Honourable Graydon Smith, Minister of Natural Resources, the Ontario Conservation Officers Association, Michael Mantha, MPPL, Gold Manitoula, and the Federation of Northern Ireland Municipalities. And I just make the same note about Noel in this one. Okay. Any discussion on this motion? Okay. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay. Council will take an eight minute break and resume at eight o'clock. Or at seven thirty.
If I can get a mover and a seconder to open up the receipt of correspondence. Moved by Councillor Ted Chenneman, second by Councillor Peter Christmaker. Be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of Township of Hornacane this hereby acknowledge receipt of the correspondence information only package attached to the agenda of the regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, December 6, 2023. And I open up the floor for discussion on these parts. I believe that we have a few that you want to discuss first. Uh, yes. Okay, go for it. Just continue, please. I just wanted to bring uh, to Council's attention item 10.2, which is items uh, from BDO that, count, that the township was waiting on. Um, and uh, just, just for Council's information, uh, the December 31st, 2022 financial information return has been uploaded to the provincial website and the financial statements have been forwarded to the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing as required by legislation and this is uh, information directly from the Treasurer. Um, the next item I'd like to bring to Council's attention is... Uh, just Can I just uh, interrupt you there for a minute just because I have a question about 10.2 okay. that we might want to address. I was reading through these statements and in it's page 197 of the package. I don't know what the page is for the actual statement. It was confusing to me in the letter because they're discussing our trust, but they have the date. I'm thinking they have the date wrong on it. Uh, page 197. Sorry, I don't know. Yeah, so it's in the opinion on the first page, the independent auditors report that they've, um, so it reads, we have audited the financial statements of the corporation of the Township of Hornpain Trust Funds, which comprise of the statement of financial position as of December 31st, 2020. And the statement uh, continuing for the year that ended in the notes of financial statements, and then it, it references December 31st, 2020 again. I'm thinking that should be 2022. I will reach out to BDO and uh, clarify what's going on here. It's probably an error and we'll just get them to uh, amend it as needed and, and resend it. Okay. Okay. And you can continue on that. Uh, the next item that I wanted to bring to Council's attention was item 10.4, the invitation to communities in bloom. Um, while it sounds like a, a great opportunity at this time or for next year, uh, staff has very limited time or capacity to participate. But that was addressed to, uh, to Mayor and Council, so I just wanted to bring that to Council's attention. The next item is uh, item 10.5. Um, this is just a follow-up letter from Minister King Asurma, the Minister of Infrastructure, um, uh, and that's a follow-up from the AMO delegation that um, Councillor Peter Kistemaker and I had um, done in front of in front of uh, Minister King Asurma. Uh, the other item, the last item that I wanted to bring to Council's attention was to item 10.8, the Ombudsman Ontario 2022-2023 Annual Report. And that was also addressed to um, Mayor, I believe, Mayor and Council. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Any other topics for discussion from the Council? Council Gray is Yeah, yeah. I do actually. 10.14 Ministry of Education, mandatory Holomodor Education. I think the Ministry got it right finally. Uh, the study of Ukraine famine, uh, it would be mandatory grade 10 history study, and I think it's wonderful. That's the real deal, not talk about the United States of America or anything else, and will be mandatory starting in 2025, the history of all the more door in Ukraine. And there's a good information on it. I think that's, that's realistic, sad history, but I think it's worth having in the high schools, my opinion. Thank okay, you. Thank you, Council. Any other items from Council? I have a few that I want to highlight. So 10.3, I'm going to give a shout out to Kevin Follinger. We meet with him, uh, usually it works out to almost quarterly every year, but uh, definitely biannually for sure. 
And um, he is an advocate for our community. He wants to see the detachment full here. And um, no, I was just uh, happy to see the update. And I know that they they are looking for officers. It's paid full tuition. We've talked about this many times that people that were raised in the north, born in the north, they stay in the north. So if you know people that want to, I've, I've written some recommendation letters for uh, possible candidates already. I would be willing to do that again. So if you know anybody that wants to apply, let us know and we can fill our confidence here in our community. Um, 10.5, that Ministry of uh, Infrastructure update, delegation update, I was completely disappointed with that because uh, we went there to talk about our scope change and looking at the the possibility of moving it quicker and it's an explanation on OFIS and ISIP funding. So I will be following up with the Ministry of Infrastructure because uh, when I read this, I was like, did they even look at our delegation package? Yeah. Go ahead. I just wanted to uh, mention, and I didn't want to interrupt earlier, but when Councillor Stefanik had asked, <laughs> sorry, it's not funny, the scope change request, I have followed up numerous times with no response. So, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been at least three times. Maybe. Okay, well, maybe we'll have a discussion and make some more calls. But anyway, I wasn't pleased with that letter. I don't even know if it, <laughs> if we look at our delegation package and put that letter beside it, I don't even know if the two would correlate. It was a rubber stamp, eh? Yeah, it's, and it's yeah. and it's explaining OSA funding and ISA funding, which we know we, we were like, and then this too, the funding was from the cultural recreation stream, was it not for the scope? Yeah, so there's, a, <laughs> anyway, I just <clears throat> baffled me. Oh, what else was there? Oh, I wanted to highlight 10.9. I've said this many times in our municipality that at some point, um, I feel like there's funds available already to do something, but I thought this was a really good uh, document that FCM created. Hopefully they'll have some good information at their conference next year. 10.10, .10, I watched the video. That is really well done for uh, the Phenom video. I was thinking, how do we get Horn Payne on one of these videos and have rail and um, forestry and get on maybe with Ian Dunn at OFIA and give the push and have a letter or something. I want a video. It's really well done. You have to watch it. And the um, Darlene Bolin is in the video. And yeah, it's well done. And that was my... Uh, my comments. Any further comments from council? Okay, and if there is none, oh, Councillor Belinda Kissmaker, go ahead. Your previous Ooh. conversation on um, what uh, Councillor Drago Stefanik had brought up, as well as yourself with this and uh, the CAO with the, uh, is there another way we can tackle this, um, getting more information from the ministries or from on this grant is there another way we should be looking at this yeah i think so because it's not working we should touch. no it's not and it's delaying a lot of things mm -hmm. do you have any suggestions Belinda? no but i sure would like to look into it like it's it's just something that there's got to be another way to get around this or get some action or something because it's taking i wonder if any other oh go ahead it's taking way too long sorry i cut you off there go ahead yeah no that's it <laughs> okay i apologize for that um i'm wondering if there's other communities that have applied and were successful for a scope change. Would uh, Mac Bain or Andrea Swanson know that? 
Well, let's see. I lost it. Is there someone else that's in the same boat as us that we can uh, uh, partner up with to look into this or? Yeah, that's what I was thinking with uh, Matt Bain is the executive director of Phnom and then Andrea Swanson's the executive director of NOMA, right? Quick call to them, they might be able to um, know if anyone else was successful in a scope change. I'll make those calls I mean and I'll follow you up with an email to you when I find out, okay? Okay, any further discussion? I put the knowledge receipt of the correspondence only to vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. <clears throat> Okay, moving on to 11 committee and board updates. If I can get a mover and a second for the mayor's meetings, moved by Councillor Dragos Tavanek, second by Councillor Ted Shannon, be it resolved that Council does hereby acknowledge receipt of mayor's meetings October and November 2022 as prepared by Mayor Cheryl Ford. Any question or discussion on those meetings? The one meeting I do want to highlight. Well, it was for the RNF. I hope I included it in there. <laughs> I hope I wasn't wrong. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I did have a sit down with um, a virtual meeting for the rural and immigration portal, and. Um, I gave a bit of an update about this at last meeting that I wasn't pleased with the meeting and it was very administrative and the push needs to come now to be included in the uh, um, whatever they make permanent for that program. They are looking at making something permanent. So my suggestion would be is that we pass a motion in the January meeting. I'll find out more information. Uh, to ensure that we're included in a permanent and that we're part of the stakeholder group. And I'm just thinking that's the first time that I'm actually putting a motion. I'll be putting a motion on the floor. So, uh, Peter, you'll have to take over for that meeting when that motion comes to arise. Okay. okay, if there's no further discussion on that, I'll put it to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. Okay, Northeast Superior Mayor's Group. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor. Peter Kistemaker, second by Councilor Ted Shenneman, be able to the Council of Corporation of the Township of Quarantine this year by acknowledge receipt of the minutes from the North East Superior Marriage Group meeting held on September 13, 2023. Uh, just some uh, comments on that meeting. Uh, the meeting had been changed. It's in um, January now. The, there was too many uh, missing parties to host the November meeting. And Tracy McKee from Ontario Northline will be at our January meeting. Any further questions or discussion on the minutes? There being none, I put them to vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, Council Committee updates. Councillor Belinda Kissmaker, I'm staring at you. I don't have anything right now. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor, here, Kissmaker. I got nothing to add at this moment. <laughs> 
Councillor Tashenman. Again, the hospital gets to be on the forefront, so the hospital is still um, putting together the succession planning, which they hope to announce early in the new year. Um, and, that, and then there's been meetings to try to do something with the, uh, the urgency and, and the agency nursing, uh, which is becoming just a provincial, well, Canada wide, with the exception of BC, being just a, and it's, it's killing everybody's budgets. It's, it's just to the point that agency nursing, agency nurses are making more than the CAOs, making more than the staff and, and picking and choosing, and it's just become an epidemic. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Dr. Cameron has uh, arranged and been able to have some locums come in, so he's going to be able to have some well deserved time off, and uh, we have coverage right through for the next couple of months. So oh, that's fantastic. A couple of uh, new body, a new body, he said, that has come up and enjoyed it and was wanted to come back. So. Oh, good. Yeah, so that was good. And that's. Yeah. That would be yeah, we owe him quite a bit of credit for yeah. the locums that he's been able to get to. Thank you, Councilor Turner. Councilor Scott? Yeah, thank you, Mayor. This first one is towards Councilor Belinda. She asked me last meeting regarding our SV respiratory disease with Park Fund Health Unit. We have minimum information. The information we received as Park Fund Health Unit was that the government is concentrating on seniors live, living in retirement homes where the, the problems most have risen. Uh, there's no other evidence uh, that our CAO MOH has, so that's all they had, and that was the only direction they got from the province of Ontario and nothing else about that. But I did ask that question our last meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we had a Board of Health meeting uh, in person. Uh, Dr. Catton will be sending a communique to all the municipalities in the PHU footprint. So to let you know what's happening with the potential um, volunteer merger with the Temiskaming. The so everybody will know the mayor and the council and all the groups mm -hmm. of what's going on. And we're looking at the future possibly, uh, not uh, in 2024 where we'll have a virtual meeting with all the uh, councils and mayors uh, across the footprint as well. I have upcoming board health meeting next week in person. And I also have upcoming finance committee uh, virtual in two weeks from today. We met with Horn Payne Public Library Board last week. We'll be meeting again in January, the first meeting of 2024. And I received the Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan 2024 to 2027, authored by uh, Deputy Clerk. Great job. I responded to her. I uh, cover all the aspects, uh, solid report. I think good documentation to proceed as a municipality and all the other partners that are part of the report did well. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you. have that coming up for further discussion. Right. So. Uh, just a question about that communique coming from Dr. Catton. Is that going to come out before your next meeting? Or? No. No? Okay. Well, not, no. Well, I look forward to meeting virtually and hearing it. Um, did you see that uh, email I sent you about that volunteer? Uh, there, yeah, you, I did. Uh, you did. Okay. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Thank you. Well, yeah, no problem. I did sign up. So, just from my vantage point, there's uh, training on the voluntary mergers that are happening across the province for health units, and they're giving uh, well, it's a few hours webinar on it. Mm -hmm. So, I will be attending that virtually. Oh. So just an update for council. So I did meet the, the interim treasurer. I uh, had a virtual meeting with him on Monday with Eileen set it up for us. And I was really pleased and I have to give a big shout out to Michael Wellman from Government Wayfinders. You know, he's uh, assisted our community in the background and, um, and able to fill this role which we need. and. We don't, you know, it's it's difficult. We don't want, even when you're on vacation just for a week, it's uh, you come back to a mountain of work, right? So hopefully we can maintain the workload. 
And um, other than that, uh, I have to say, I, I did mention it a bit earlier, uh, the shout out for the Christmas tree lighting. It was um, interesting because it was the first time I had ever prepared a speech for that tree lighting because in the past, it's always been either way too cold or you can't hear me. And, and I arrived and there was a huge speaker system set up and the, the, yes, it was, I was like, I'm glad I'm prepared. <laughs> I would have not know what to say here. But it was really great. The kids participated in the countdown. And one of our newly uh, recruited firefighters pulled the name for the draw. So Anne came up to help me with the light. The un, like unsolicited just came up. It was nice. So, and I am looking forward to our uh, postponed Christmas dinner. I hope everyone can still attend in uh, January. Check your emails. I think we do need to get together to celebrate and uh, remember that it's all just not work. Let's have some fun too. <laughs> Okay, moving on, 12 new and other business. 12.1 uh, is deputation request for road, ma road maintenance fees. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenman, be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Quarantine does hereby proceed as discussed. So, um, Eileen, you mentioned, do you want to speak, Eileen? Go ahead. Uh, yes, thank so you. For, uh, just for Council's information, I did mention it in my uh, monthly report as well on this agenda that um, we had received a, a deputation request for the road maintenance fees item. Um, so uh, this item is now on the agenda just for council discussion as to um, how, just to see how council would like to deal with the deputation request or really any other requests regarding the road maintenance fees, just because um, this item is still being, you know, uh, overseen by the municipal solicitor um, who is going to come back and give council you know provide council with further information um, so you know just my recommendation would be to council that while we can still continue to receive any requests whether they're deputations or through the co uh, questions comments and uh, concerns portal that <clears throat> we receive them but we really wouldn't be like council should be advised first by the municipal solicitor before there's any further deputations or anything else that's kind of um, completed before the solicitor talks to council. If that makes sense. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So we had this, uh, we had a discussion in our agenda meeting about this. Um, I actually asked Eileen to ensure that it went on council for council discussion so we could all have consensus on moving forward with this item is I really don't see the point of having any more deputations or any kind of um, looking into further matters from where we're standing right now. We've given the solicitor um, direction and a timeline. And there's, I, I don't wanna add more to the plate till we clarify those items and then we we'll move from there. And basically looking for consensus so I mean, we can proceed and know that it doesn't need to come back to us. Any further discussion? Okay, the motion is on the floor to uh, proceed as discussed. So it's consensus then from council to hold any further deputations or further information until after we receive the report from the solicitor. Go ahead. So we could uh, grant another deputation for by like after we've listened to the. Uh, Oh yeah, I'm not saying don't. Because I, I don't want to close the door to any more no. deputations concerning it, because this is a very important thing that should be addressed from all sides for all. But yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm that thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I think when we had discussed it uh, previous, there could be possibility of another open public consultation. Yeah. There could be, you know, so we can. Um, it's just we don't know until after we've talked and seen all the information that has to be sought out, right? So. Yep. Yeah. Belinda, are you in agreement with that? I'm in agreement. I don't want to close the door, but I, I think at the moment we need to hear from um, what we're, we need from this side. So, yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Do you need any more information? Is that good, Eileen? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I put that uh, motion to a vote to proceed as discussed. Those in favor? And that is carried. None opposed. Okay, 12.2, 
annual strategic plan report. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Dragos Tanik, second by Councillor Ted Chenman. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of Township of Farmington does hereby acknowledge receipt, receipt of staff report CAO 2023 16 annual report of strategic plan objectives 2023 as provided by Island Singh, CAO Clark. Did you have any comments on this one? Sorry? I don't, uh, I don't have anything okay. on this one. Okay, I open up the floor for questions or comments. Councillor Dragos Spen, go ahead. Through you to the CEO, good report. Appreciate it. All around it. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Okay, the only uh, comment I had is I've been encouraged before that if we run into areas where, where we're taking on different items, um, I think you've labeled three here of the CTA mediations and the road feed masons, the whistle cessation, is that we look at ways that we either get um, look to funding, to find funding if it's available, uh, other staff members before we take on other work. And I'm supportive of you in that so that we don't, I don't want to get off of our strategic plan. So I'm glad to see we're still on target. Any further questions or comments? Okay, being that, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? And that is carried. <coughs> Okay, item 12.3 and 12.4, are you going to speak to those? Uh, yes, so council, uh, this, the privacy policy, so 12.3, um, this came up actually through the QT pod agreement, which is under bylaws and it's also on this agenda. Um, but we, we, we realized that we need a privacy policy in order to be MFIPA com compliant. Um, so it's important that we try to pass the privacy policy as soon as possible after signing the QT pod agreement. Um, but uh, for 12.3 and 12.4, council um, can just review and, and provide their input input to de the deputy clerk um, by December 20th if they would like, and then we will uh, bring the both of these back uh, onto the January 10th meeting. Okay, so Council, you have until uh, December the 20th for comments, and they'll come back January 10th. Any comments now that Council would like to have? I had to uh, echo what Gary little said earlier about the draft community safety and well-being plan, and thank, uh, thank the entire committee for being on it and putting it together for our community. The only, um, at a first glance, the only... Um, issue I had was the rail, the picture of the rail on the front. I think it's been changed. It's been updated to a rail picture. And I just said we should look for a good uh, safety slogan of something about not being on the rails. <laughs> so anyway, and uh, Jen said she'd look into that. But uh, okay, get your comments in. Is there any further comments at this time? There being none, then we'll move on. Bylaws. Bylaw 13.1 is the appoint the acting treasurer. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Ted Chenman, second by Councillor Peter Kistmaker. We resolve that bylaw number 2043 being a bylaw to appoint an acting treasurer for the corporation which comes to funding hereby read a first and second time be considered read a third time and finally passed. Those in favor? And that is carried. Opposed. So bylaw number 2044 is the comprehensive user fee and services charges. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Drago Spanik, second by Councillor Ted Chenon. Be resolved that bylaw number 2044 being a bylaw to establish comprehensive user fees and service changes. Be hereby read a first and second time and be considered read a third time and finally passed. Is there any further discussion on this bylaw? There being none, I put that to a vote. Those in favor? 
And that is carried. <clears throat> and 13.3, bylaw number 2045, the QT pod. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenman. Be resolved that bylaw number 2045 being a bylaw to enter into a subscription service agreement for the provision, hosting, and implementation of the site minder fuel management software for the town Hornpain Municipal Airport between the Corporation of the Township of Hornpain and QT Pod LC, LLC and Oregon Limited Liability Company, QT Pod. You hereby read a first and second time and considered read a third time and finally passed. Any discussion on that bylaw? I tell you one question can make the difference. Searching down rabbit holes, eh? Those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, motions and notices of motions. Is, uh, the first one up is Councillor Drago Stefanik. If I can get a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor. Actually, I believe it's actually moved by Drago, right? Yeah, and by seconded Mr. by Peter. Whereas Council has received complaints from residents regarding nuisance coyotes in the community, therefore be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby direct staff to investigate the responsibilities of the Township and the Ministry of Natural Resources and forestry MNRF with regards to the education control management of coyotes within the community. And the floor is open for discussion. Go ahead, Councillor. If I could expand on it. It's, yeah, it's yeah. official now. Yeah. I think basically to talk about health and safety and well-being of the community. I think that if there's a wild animal running in our community, uh, it's unsafe for citizens and also unsafe for domestic pets, which are basically family members to a lot of people in this community. And I think I like to see whose responsibility is it? Is it municipalities, Ministry of Natural Resources, who it is? What is the protocol to subside this or eliminate coyotes in the community? This has been going on for years and there was no major incident and sooner or later it's going to happen. And I like to see whose responsibility is this? Then we know. Right. If it's us, we act on it. And whatever the protocols we have to follow, let's follow them. Uh, it did been going on for the last few months now, I, I see, but people are saying that, or children at the school are saying that they're seeing coyotes running around their house, so they they can go outside and play and be active. So that was the intent. Yep. Thank you. And I think they captured it uh, correctly here. And yes. The staff for the, yes, it's just to investigate the responsibilities, right, to see where it lies. Go ahead. <clears throat> expand on what Councilor Stefanik was saying. I agree with what you said. Um, and also to ask, uh, why we have this problem is it climate change is there a lot of uh, animals in town that attract them like the uh, farm animals like the chickens and that i've heard that being thrown around i don't know i would like some some answers actually from people that actually know what would attract them is is it the weather uh, the climate change that's uh, taking part in it is it something else that we could prevent and uh, going forward once we find out the responsibilities and also the legal um options that individual homeowners have you know so if there's something that comes on the property in after your animal do you have a legal right to do something and what is that legal right and uh, use other communities that are similar to ours in the same situation as the examples of what worked for them and what didn't work because i don't want to this isn't breaking new but coyotes have been issues no. in small rural communities for since we've been here like mm -hmm. you know hundreds of years but we just never had them here before because <clears throat> i've heard different stories like from one of the local trappers actually was telling me that there is solutions but it's 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 long-term solutions like so snaring and trapping or not but he was what and he made a very very valid point because council stefani just mentioned like a lot of these pets that we have are they are family we have two dogs in my own home and i know what he's saying and I don't want, you know, and I know you're, all the dogs are supposed to be tied up and in the perfect world they are, but I wouldn't want to see someone's family pet get stuck and go under the same, have the same fate as a coyote or worse yet, a young child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where I think we need some experience and some guidance from communities that have already been through it, dealt with it and been successful with it. Okay, thank you for that. Any further discussion? Councilor Belinda Kissmaker, go ahead. And please include the MNR on this. Sorry, you cut out there. Uh, part of the presentation uh, are the solution. I would like the MNR to have a big input into this. 
Yeah, I agree. I was kind of thinking about, I think it's coming to that point where they did the Bearwise program and they funded it, they researched it, that across Northern Ontario, more and more municipalities are having this issue. Okay, so uh, any further discussion? There being none, I put that uh, motion to a vote. Those in favor? And that's carried. Okay, item 14.2. Becker Road speed limit. Mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor. Belinda. Oh, yes. Belinda Kistemaker. Second by Councillor Peter Kistemaker. Be it resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Hornpain does hereby direct staff to investigate bylaw number 1862, being a bylaw to regulate the speed of vehicular traffic on the connecting link of Highway 631 Leslie Avenue Becker Road to alter the speed limit east of the intersection of Becker Road and Highway 631 North. Okay. Discussion? Go ahead, Wanda. The reason why I brought this up why... is um, we looked at this back in... Um, I'm getting an echo. <laughs> we looked back at this in uh, the when we were on uh, council before, and we had, it was a health issue, issue on Becker Road. And then we were looking at, um, and we knocked down the 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 uh, we we knocked down the mileage then. And then when we looked at knocking down the mileage within Horn Pain, which was down to 40, um, in front of my place as well as in front of the hotel as well as going uh, up to uh, the last residential. In Horn Payne, I agreed with that. Um, but then all of a sudden, our our uh, mileage signs changed again, and I was wondering why that. Happened. And apparently, it was because of, we had decided on that, which I don't think we never did, ever did. So I I just think I have to look at it because I find it does not work right. And if you drive over there and you driving back, it just Okay, I just you broke up there a bit, so I just want to reiterate. Can you hear me all right, Belinda? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So um, it's the portion just uh, when, you, that's, when you're going by Horn Payne Cemetery and you're driving out to the mill, and when you're driving back in, we had a mileage sign of 50 down and then up to 70 and then it changed all of a sudden it went from to to 40 and it was like why why did it change to 40 and apparently it was because of what we had stated and i i just like this looked at because it i just feel it doesn't make sense okay and your in your mind your recommendation is that you go 40 and then it goes back to the 50 and then to the yeah, why did we why why did we change the 50 and the 70. okay okay it's not going to be an easy fix my understanding is it's connected within the connecting links portion of our agreement that we had to go through the ministry for that's what i thought it was yeah so but we could look to find out if we can change that. Is it a difficult change to just change our, it's a, it's our road from that point on. It's not the connecting links portion. I just I find that. that would be... Go ahead, Belinda. When this was first brought up, it was a health and safety issue on Backer Road. And then, okay, since it's a health and safety issue, okay, I agree in changing it. But changing it again, down uh, some more, I, it just doesn't make sense. It, it's That road used to, you, you have to drive that road according to road conditions. It doesn't matter what. And it, it just doesn't make sense. I just, 
I, it's something I wouldn't agreed on. Okay, Councillor Peter just said. Um, I, I can just, I, I, I do understand why it was at forty, because it was part of the connecting, and we, we, and we wanted it down to forty through town by the hotel and by the, you know, the starting at the Pentecost Church, which I completely agree with, because I've seen it too many times and drove a truck all my life. I've seen, you know, that people are going too fast. But uh, uh, Councillor Kistemaker, we, we talked in the past, and, and it is, and what people are complaining about is, and I can see it because I caught, I caught myself doing it, like you go past the cemetery and it becomes a speed trap. So we're doing, yeah. the truth of the matter is, is when you're doing on 631, most people, you can say what you want, probably do 90 kilometers an hour. People going down Becker Road will do 70. And they, they, they know that they're speeding, but they're within 10. You're doing that even 60, 70, you're looking at major ramifications and truth be known it used to be 80 kilometers an hour at at this at starting at the cemetery right to the mill mm -hmm. and it went it went down to 70 then it went down to 60. and but i know that belinda has been saying and i agree with her we're looking at a potential speed trap and i mean i know you have that police officer to enforce it but nonetheless it could happen it, i think it has happened and it will continue and it's just and it's just, I have to, when I go over that hill, Madam Mayor, I got my foot on the brake all the way until the, until uh, the Wixie crossing, not the Wixie, pardon me, like the first where you pull off of the propane, propane where the uh, mm -hmm. north and south track begin. Yeah. Right with because it will, you will overspeed just mm -hmm. by going down that, you know, just like in town, when I'm going down third Ave, you have, everybody puts brakes on, but, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think going back. We were always 40 in town, were we not? And then it's just 50 on 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 uh, on Leslie, I, I think, if I remember correctly. Just people now, it's been they've been made aware of it because of a change. But yeah, the speed drop, I think, is what we were kind of like what Belinda's been talking about. Can it be? Can this be resolved with better signage? Because my I'm going to give you my concern on it is that we have our takeoff to <laughs> our um, landfill right there. And we have had in the past 10 years two significant accidents right in that area between the cemetery and the landfill. One was uh, someone turning into the um, yes, I remember that cemetery or not the cemetery into the landfill into the transfer station, and then another one was actually um, hit washboard in that area. So I'm wondering, it's not going to be a quick fix, but can we put up? further signage so that people are aware of it that this is 40 because it's not it's not going to change overnight no because if we have to go back to the ministry we have to look at it like it could be and the other I, the I other option I, go ahead Linda, I sorry I feel further signage is going to work it's just how it is when you're driving into town it's uh it takes you by surprise you could put up a maybe trucks turning or something you could do that but otherwise i wouldn't put up any more signage <laughs> well how many signs do we have out there currently yeah, you, there's, there's enough there really go ahead uh, there's, there's one sign that would be legal in under 600 meters apart so there's just in that area there's like four lights Okay. Okay. So they're getting significant notice that it's happening. Be <laughs> advanced too. Okay. Okay. Councilor, what if you were to, uh, if we were, and I don't know if it's possible and how much is involved to move that, convert, like go from the transition, have it moved up from where the north and south track start to where the dump, is, so you get past the dump. Because I do agree, there's been two close calls, and the one that you're talking about where it was from the turning. Someone could have died now. Yeah. yeah. You know? And I think if they were doing 40 kilometers an hour, it would have been a different outcome. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so too. They would have just slid the truck. Yeah. And then smashed it. But I mean, just because, like, like the council kissing me, saying, like, it is a speed trap, but I mean, just to, to move it up to dump would make a difference, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the truth of it is, everybody's on edge because it's 60 for the rest of the way. And it does that, you know, a, a slight amount of time to your travel time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If they change from the cemetery to the where the sign is now, you gain 15 seconds of your travel. Yeah, 15 okay. seconds and three points in your license if there's a police officer there. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Okay, so states now, I think right now we just need to uh, have a bit of investigation done on what we can legally change of our current connecting links document of our agreement. And then we can, I don't want, my, my concern as council is I don't want extensive work done if it's going to be a long process. Yeah. Because um, it took us almost two years to get the 40. <laughs> so, um, but just understanding our collecting, our connecting links agreement with the MTO and understanding what we can change and that's what, and in that agreement, I think that's fair to figure that out and then staff can bring us back with updates yeah. of where we can actually change easily the speed and where we can't. Agreed. And yeah. uh, one hopeful uh, takeaway for this is that in between the transfer station and Spruce Street are quite a few acres in there that mm. people are looking at in our community. Right. So if you have a lot of um industry going in and out of that area it would be better to have it at 40. Mm -hmm. so so anyway it uh any further comments on that okay there being none i put uh, the motion to a vote those in favor and that is carried okay Next, we're going into a closed session. <clears throat> Are we, sorry, you reading it? Yeah, I can move into a closed session. Most of them, a mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Peter Kistemich, second by Councillor Ted Hillman. We're in section 239, 3.1 of the NISCO Act 2001 states that a meeting of council or a local board or a committee of either of them may be closed to the public if the following conditions are both satisfied. One, the meeting is held for the purpose of educating or training the members. Two, at the meeting, no member discusses or otherwise deals with any other matter in a way that materially advances the business or decision making of council with the board of committee. Therefore, be it resolved that the next portion of the meeting at 8.17 p.m. be closed to the public for the purpose of updating council on outstanding confidential items for 2023. Was in favor? And that is carried.
Okay, if we need to move or a second or return to open, moved by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, second by Councillor Ted Shenneman, be resolved that the Council of Corporation of the Township of Parkview does hereby return to open council at 8.32 p.m. Was in favor? And that's carried. So just for the session, we were just, uh, council got an update on any outstanding issues that uh, need to be enclosed. And there's nothing further to report at this time. So if we can get a little burn assistant for the confirmatory, moved by Councillor Drago Spanik, second by Councillor Ted Shenneman, be it resolved that bylaw number 2046 be the bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at the regular meeting held on Wednesday, December 6, 2023. Be hereby read a first and second time and considered that a third time it finally passed. Those in favor? And that is carried. And adjournment. Moved by Councillor. Ted Chenneman, second by Councillor Peter Kistemaker, be it resolved that Council does hereby adjourn this regular meeting of Council held on Wednesday, December 6, 2023 at 8.32 p.m. Those in favor? And that is carried. Good job, Council.